Hi, my name is Puna Nazari, and I'm a PhD student at Leiden Observatory working with Evina van Dyshuk. But I'm going to talk about what I did before coming here with Kathy Clark and her group at uh, Cambridge on observational consequences of planet migration. In the background, you can see a beautiful image of CI Tau. Uh, you can see all these nice structures there. And you have probably seen these nice images that were observed by ALMA as part of the D-sharp survey uh, for these pro protoplanetary disks. We see a huge diversity in their structures. We see dust rings, gaps, uh, and spirals. Uh, the origin of these structures is not very clear yet. One of the ways that we can produce uh, dust rings in uh, disks is to have a planet uh, there. And for this talk, I'm going to only focus on planets being the cause of uh, these dust rings. An overview of my talk is given here. So first I will talk about uh, how do these uh, dust rings form if we have a planet in the disk. Then I'm gonna talk about uh, what is the effect of planet migration on these dust rings, which is the results from Mirror al 2019. And then I'm gonna talk about whether we can actually observe this effect, which is the results from Nazari et al 2019. So let's start with how dust rings form. Um, in protoplanetary disks. So uh, I'm showing a two-dimensional gas pressure profile of a disk with a planet, a non-migrating planet in it. So the planet is located in this sort of gap. And if we azimuthally average the gas pressure at each radius and plotted versus radius is what we get on the right-hand side. The planet, I have also shown where the planet is located um, in this uh, red dashed line. Uh, 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 where the gas pressure drops. So the green arrows show how the dust is moving in the disk. And we can see that knowing that the velocity of the dust is proportional to A, which is the dust grain size, times dp by dr, which is the gas pressure um, gradient. And given that the uh, pressure gradient, gradient is uh, negative almost everywhere in the disk. The dust drifts, in bar, uh, drifts inwards towards the star, uh, except here where the planet is located, where it moves towards the uh, pressure maximum. And here is where exactly we would, um, uh, we would uh, produce a ring just outside of the planet orbit. So you can see that if nothing happens and the planet is just sitting there, what happens uh, to the dust grains inside of the planet orbit is that they would just drift inwards until they fall onto the star. So we would see transition disks. But we do observe some non-transition disks with bright inner disks. Um, and now I'm going to talk about whether planet migration can solve this problem and is going to make any difference in our simulations. Uh, to see if we can see these bright inner disks or not. Here I'm showing a, a star and we've got a planet and we've got a bunch of large dust grains and some small dust grains. Orange is showing the dust inside of the planet orbit and uh, yellow the dust outside of the planet orbit. And we know that the large dust grains move faster than the smaller ones. They'll, therefore, uh, as the planet is migrating in the disk, what happens is that the large dust grains inside of the planet orbit would move very fast that they eventually fall into the star. The large dust grains outside of the planet orbit uh, move fast enough that they can keep up with the planet, but the small ones outside of the planet orbit just fall behind. And the small dust grains inside of the planet orbit move towards the uh, star, but they, because they move slowly, the planet keep, um, can keep up with them. So the signature of planet migration is really a dust ring with large dust grains outside of the planet orbit and a dust enhancement with small dust grains inside of the planet orbit. Now the question is, can we actually observe this signature or not? To answer this question, uh, we looked at hydrodynamical simulations of Fargo 3D for disks with characteristics that I have shown here. So basically a, a disk with gas surface density that is proportional to one over radius and an aspect ratio uh, that is proportional to radius to the power of 0.25. And we assumed a, a planet mass of 30 Earth masses. The reason we chose 30 is because it's large enough that it would perturb the disk, but not too large that would open a gap. On the right hand side, I'm showing basically the same plot that I showed before, gas pressure versus radius. And, uh, but here for a migrating planet. So if I show you the different snapshots during the simulation, you would see that the planet is migrating inwards. 
then what we did is that we took the dust and gas surface density from the hydro codes and we assumed a temperature that goes with one over square root of R and a dust size distribution with a power law that goes with minus 3.5 to uh, calculate the intensity because intensity is basically what we would observe from the sky. So we calculated it at two different wavelengths, three millimeter and 0.85 millimeter, which correspond to band three and seven of ALMA. Then what we did is that we made simulated observations using CASA sim observe tool of our simulations uh, to produce the images that we would uh, see. So here, uh, I'm showing the results on the bottom. I'm showing the uh, images from the simulated obser observations. On the top, I'm showing the um, azimuthly average intensity versus radius. Uh, the solid line shows the simulations and the dashed lines show the simulated observations. And the reason that we do see these gaps is because I'm only plotting signal to noise ratio of up two. Uh, um, then, the, uh, the green is showing uh, the band seven data and red is showing band three data. And I'm also showing what the critical dust grain size is uh, on the plot. Uh, basically the critical dust grain size is the, dust, uh, the size for the dust that moves uh, as fast as the planet. So the same speed as the planet. So here um, we've got a simulation with a slowly migrating planet here. Uh, a planet which is uh, migrating with an intermediate speed and a planet that is migrating fast. So um, we see, basically what we see is three different morphologies. We see um, uh, only one ring out, outside of the planet orbit for a slowly migrating planet, a double ring for an intermediate migrating planet. Basically um, uh, the, re uh, the reason is that we have uh, some dust grains that they are smaller than the critical dust grain size and they are moving slower than the planet. Therefore, they are in this dust enhancement inside of the planet orbit. And we would see uh, some dust grains that they are moving faster than the planet and they are trapped outside of the planet orbit. Uh, but for the fast migrating planet, basically the planet is moving so fast that all the dust, almost all the dust is moving slower than the planet. And we only see a, an inner ring. And so I have assumed a, maximum dust grain size that is one millimeter and uh, it's easier to see that. So if the critical dust grain size is 0.6, then almost all the dust is um, smaller than 0.6 and that's why we only see one inner ring. Uh, so basically if we look at the sky and, um, and ask the question where the ring is located with, re with respect to the gap, if it is inside, we can say that we have detected a migrating planet. If it's outside, then we may be seeing a um, slowly migrating planet or a st stationary planet. And if we see a double ring, then it is potentially a migrating planet. The reason I say potentially because you can think of ways of making this double ring, but uh, with other mechanisms, for example, to non-migrating planets. So can we actually distinguish these two different scenarios? This is the slide that I showed you before. And uh, we remember uh, that here the dust grains are smaller and here the dust grains are larger. So we can distinguish uh, these uh, two rings using spectral index. So I remind you what spectral index is. Uh, on the right hand side, I'm showing the intensity versus um, frequency. And basically the spectral index um, is, uh, uh, characterizes the slope of the spectral energy distribution. And uh, so we know that intensity is proportional to frequency to the power of the spectral index uh, or this alpha thing. And using this proportionality, we can just uh, basically calculate spectral index using this formula. So one thing that we need to know is that the spectral index is lower for larger dust grains. So once we calculate the spectral index for our simulation is, this is what we see. On the top row is what exactly I showed before, but on the bottom now we are seeing the spectral index. If we focus on the intermediate speed uh, migrating planet, then we see that for the inner dust enhancement, we have a larger spectral index than the outer 
uh, outer dust ring. So, um, which is exactly what we would expect if we have larger dust grains outside and smaller dust grains inside. So basically, if uh, we do see a double ring, we can just uh, calculate the spectral index. And if it is, the spectral index is higher in the inner ring, then we are seeing a migrating planet. I guess the next step is to look at the sky and see if we are actually seeing um, systems that they are hosting migrating planets. Uh, Elias 24 is uh, a good candidate because it's got an in, a bright inner disk. On the right hand side, I'm showing intensity versus radius, uh, and the black is showing the D sharp data for Elias 24, and the other lines are showing uh, the simulations uh, that I've run for. Um, for this system. We see that the migrating planet model predicts the data best. Uh, however, these are just very pre preliminary results. And uh, this project is actually being led by uh, Dr. Richard Booth. Um, and um, uh, so uh, it's still an ongoing project. So if we really want to constrain the planet speed, we do need uh, to calculate the spectral index, which needs the, which would need us to have more observations of this uh, system in, a, on, in another wavelength. And we have applied for some ALMA data, and, but we haven't uh, got the data yet. And we are still waiting for it. So that's, I guess, where the stage of that project is. I'm going to finish uh, on this slide, which is uh, what I would like you to take away from my talk. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me.